Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, we would like to uh, dub our response sort of, where is the urgency on jobs? You know, tonight was a night for an honest reflection on the state of the state. Um, it wasn't a night for rosy scenarios. What we needed was just a simple, candid assessment of what's going right and what needs dramatic improvement. And that's what was missing here tonight. We didn't ask the hard questions, such as why is it that incomes are lagging in Wisconsin for middle class families? We didn't ask the question, why is job creation lagging in Wisconsin? These are very basic questions that most families across Wisconsin uh, are asking. And more, many are even more are experiencing. And it's our duty to have that sense of urgency that's missing here in Wisconsin. Uh, urgency and immediate action on prompting an economic recovery, closing the skills gap, putting people back to work should be job number one. No more broken promises, no more glossing over real problems. And I agree with the governor in one respect, no more excuses. Uh, we have heard so many excuses over the course of the past year. Now it's time to set aside excuses and focus on action immediately. You know, Wisconsin is number 42 in job creation. Um, Forbes magazine projects for the next two years, we're going to remain at 47. Uh, this is unacceptable. I don't think any Wisconsin citizen that's used to seeing Wisconsin being at the top of the class for things like job creation, things like public education, um, things like clean, open, and transparent government, all the values we care so deeply about would be happy with this assessment. And that's what's been missing. Um, so the time for action is now. No more delay. You know, the legislature has been out of session for nine full months. During that period, we repeatedly called to come back in to close this skills gap with Secretary Arnie Duncan, President Clinton, I mean, President Obama's Secretary of Education has estimated we could put 2 million people back to work immediately, 50,000 Wisconsinites could go back to work immediately. We do not want to wait six more months for a budget to pass. This action is needed now. We need to focus on the middle class. We need to improve the condition of middle class workers that have been hurt so badly over the course of the past couple of years. Uh, middle class families deserve hope and security. Um, we must help those families that are struggling with unemployment, underemployment, declining, declining wages, and quality of life. They deserve hope, assurance, and real action, and we'll offer packages, as we did last session, for attempting to deal with all of those issues. And we hope the governor is true to his campaign promise that he had when he was going to retain his seat, and we hope Republicans will be true to their campaign promise to work together on a bipartisan basis to make this a reality. There's nothing wrong with this state that cannot be solved with actual focus and urgency devoted to jobs, in public education. Um, Wisconsin has often led the nation in innovations, and now is the time to dedicate ourselves to putting people back to work and improving the lives of middle class families. Senator Larson. Thank you. I don't have as, uh, as, as clear and eloquent of a speech written as, as um, Representative Barca. Um, there are a number of things that I agree with the governor on. Um, always bashing the Chicago Bears is, is, a, is a good way to start. Um, acknowledging the, the restaffing of our travel centers and making sure that we're welcoming people in Wisconsin is a good start. And acknowledgement of, uh, of unions um, is also something good to see from this governor. Um, and then him also um, trashing his Republican uh, U.S. House of Representatives, including well, Representative Ryan and their inability to get anything done, um, getting less done than any Congress since the Great Depression. I think it's remarkable that he pointed that out today. Um, now, the problems with the governor is that he's had the same priority of trying to set jobs as our number one priority for two years, but he said that, but he haven't, we haven't seen the results of it. We saw a special session on jobs, that didn't result in jobs, that resulted in special interest giveaways, that resulted in partisan projects being pursued um, instead of setting our sights on what we needed when we needed it. Um, I would hope that the governor does um, sit up a little bit straighter and start working on jobs with Democrats. We saw what happens when you go with a one-party system, working only with Republicans in the Senate and working only with Republicans in the Assembly. 
Now he has an option to actually work with Democrats. Um, we are prepared to help close the skills gap that would result in over 40,000 jobs being filled overnight if we were able to refund and refocus on uh, the technical colleges for our state. Um, also reprioritizing the full amount that was cut from our education system, over a billion dollars from K-12 technical schools and colleges. Now, if we're able to reprioritize uh, in our future, in our children, we'll be able to fill these jobs and start lowering class sizes at the same time. Um, I think that overall, if you look at the, the, the speech and the way that the governor uh, set it out, it was high on, the, uh, high on theatrics, uh, but low on substance. Um, we saw a, a lot of, of, of fluff, but we didn't see the details of what's going to actually come from it. And I think the biggest thing that he trotted out um, that was unfortunate is talking about uh, a mine where even the WMC, which is the, the one who's pushing this, has said that we will not see the jobs he's promising for at least seven years, um, even under the best case scenario. Um, and uh, those would be 700 jobs total. Now, that at the same time as we could create 10,000 jobs um, over the next few years by actually taking the federal government up on the Medicaid expansion, which would be 100% funded through, uh, through and beyond uh, the end of Governor Walker's term in office. Um, we could take that, we could create at least 10,000 jobs and have the added bonus of making sure that those people who are suffering, who are sick, and who are qualified to be able to be covered by the state would actually be covered. Um, so these are some things that, that, uh, that we could do together. Um, the other thing that I thought was glaring was his mention of the fraud, waste, and abuse within state government without mentioning once what's going on with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. I think he's whistling past the graveyard on this when um, it seems every week we're opening up the newspaper and finding out more funds that have been lost or have never been kept track of. So if he's going to really tackle fraud, waste, and abuse, he needs to open up the state, and that state agency in particular, to accountability and transparency. He needs to pull back the curtain and let the sun shine in so all of Wisconsinites can see exactly what is going on uh, in this, uh, uh, this plagued industry uh, or this plagued institution. Um, with that, um, we'd open it up to questions, unless there's anything else. Any questions? Going once? I mean, twice. I guess everyone's going to watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.